Meeting his Security Council later today in an interaction on source says that at the top of the agenda is China as well as administration's roadmap to peace and development and the war on illegal drugs. For what we can expect, we brought in no less than former National Security Advisor and Congressman Roy Lugones. Hello, good morning, sir. Now, this is the first National Security Council <coughs> meeting on the and it was called by a former president of the army when he was uh, when he accepted his appointment as Special Envoy to China. Now, that's what right. can we expect in this meeting, especially with regard to how to move forward with China? Well, I understand that uh, first they'll be talking about the drug campaign, then also the ceasefire, and of course uh, the West Philippine Sea, South China Sea dispute. So That's very from, important. What can we expect? Well, uh, I, 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 do, I hope that uh, <coughs> the Security Council will stress the importance of asserting uh, our rights under the ruling of the arbitral tribunal. That's very important. You know, the, the people, the government worked hard in filing the case. Uh, we, we prayed for victory, we got our victory, we celebrated, and we have to fight for it. I think uh, we should not set it aside. We should affirm it and make it the basis for any dialogue with China. Now, the EDCA has just been ruled constitutional mm -hmm. finally by the Supreme Court, and we have John Kerry also coming in to talk to President Duterte right before the National Security Council meeting. How do you see that playing into the dynamics of what will happen in the meeting? Well, uh, EDCA is very important. It's a good thing that finally the Supreme Court affirmed. In other words, now the EDCA program can move forward without any worry that it might be scuttled or uh, obstructed along the way. Uh, it's very important. Uh, EDCA is looking at five bases, uh, four of them air bases. Mm -hmm. I understand that they're also looking at other maybe additional bases. So it's very important because uh, EDCA is uh, going to be very crucial in our external security. Uh, alliances are very normal. It's very normal for countries to have alliances. Japan has an alliance. Australia, the United States, we also have ours, especially in our case. Very important. Now you mentioned before that this has been a long time since mm -hmm. the National Security Council has been convened. Now having been part of that in the previous um, earlier administration, mm -hmm. how do you how can you tell us what it's like? Give us a glimpse of the dynamics inside the groups. We're looking at thirty-five leader members yeah. there, former presidents also sitting there, cabinet members and senators. What is the output of the well, it's, it's actually a mix of uh, those in the executive branch, start with the president and leaders of uh, Congress, the Senate president and uh, uh, the Speaker of the House. Although now, uh, the other committee members, like the chairman of the Committee on Defense of both houses, uh, Committee on uh, Public Order of both houses, will not be there because uh, the Congress has not been organized yet. So there will be no representatives in that sector. We expect the Secretary of Defense to be there, the ILG, Department of Foreign Affairs that will be there. So the dynamics are very strong, but the President will play a very key role in establishing the parameters, establishing the priorities. The National Security Council meetings are very important because it enables the country to navigate into the future, the immediate future and maybe the intermediate future, because there might be some traps uh, along the way some security concerns along the way that might just prop up. If uh, the country is not prepared for it, then the country might be, co uh, 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 might be caught off balance. So it's very important to anticipate some of these potential plus points that could happen along the way. Could that also be the reason why Imbalacan has been very relatively very diplomatic about the Hague ruling? You know, we, don't, we didn't get an official statement from President Duterte after the Hague decision. Even in his sauna, he took it very, you know, uh, as the similar words as used by the uh, Protect the Yasa in the DOJ. Well, uh, I, I can understand that because I think uh, the key there is uh, to make sure that there's going to be a dialogue. Now, Secretary Kerry, I understand, is going to push for a dialogue. He made that statement already yep. uh, before coming here. That to me is very important because the previous administration did not have a dialogue, closed the diplomatic channels. You know, we should follow the example of Vietnam. Vietnam has been in a thousand year conflict with uh, China. They have the common boundary, maritime and land. But in spite of uh, this conflict, some of them bloody, they kept their uh, diplomatic channels open. Uh, they had this uh, confrontation in 1988, causing about 70 Vietnamese sailors that uh, are killed. They had this uh, confrontation when uh, China tried to introduce a, uh, a uh, uh, rig, an oil rig, 
But in spite of that, uh, they exchanged uh, ambassadors, they exchanged foreign ministers and even heads of state. That is what we should follow. Have a dialogue, but make sure that in this dialogue, we assert our rights as ruled by the arbitral tribunal, that we, we have the EEC, that we own the EEC, that they should not, uh, they should not invade our exclusive economic zone. So we open dialogue, but not disregard the hate ruling. Not the set aside not the ruling. That, that, that to me is very important. Otherwise, uh, we, you know, we almost disregard the efforts of uh, how many years? How many years? Back? All the legal uh, brain work that was done there uh, so, to ensure our victory. I also want to go more for uh, internal security. Now, during mm -hmm. the summer, one of his big announcements was that the unilateral ceasefire mm -hmm. with the communist rebels. How, rebels, how significant was that move by the president? Well, that's a good move. It's an act of good faith on the part of uh, the president. It's a very bold move. Uh, <coughs> but, of course, we expect that the other side should also reciprocate because uh, the worry there is uh, if we have a ceasefire, mm -hmm. And uh, what about how, how would uh, the military conduct their patrols, for example? Meantime, but the other side might try to strengthen their position as far as affected uh, barangays are concerned. How and even increase them? their influence. That will that be the, it, it, it's possible if there is no good faith on the, on the other side. Uh, there, there should be ceasefire, not only with respect, with respect to the fireworks, but with respect to the groundwork because if the military will have its unilateral ceasefire, but they continue their groundwork, they might increase their influence uh, in the countryside. And that's uh, a worrisome prospect as far as the government is concerned. So this really needs, you know, you must have joint efforts from yeah. both sides. Yeah, and that's why this NSC is going to be important. Uh, the, the ceasefire has been declared already. The next move is uh, what do we expect from uh, the nine agencies to be part of the the armed forces and how, they will implement. and how they will implement and how they will make sure that the areas of influence of the CPP and PA will not increase during the ceasefire period. Thank you very much. Very valuable insights. Thank you very Thank much, Lord Wallace, for joining us this morning. When we return, Zalora is putting up more delivery centers across the country. The details next. Okay.